Hi everyone, this is our first episode of my new series called Resolve This For Me. And this is a series of videos that will focus on problems that you as a colorist may be having. So for example, in our first episode, we're gonna go over the use of the Avid Artist Color Panel. The Avid Artist Color Panel, which was formerly known as the Euphonics Panel, is a great panel and it's incredible value for the money. The panel is end of life, but can still be found in many locations and even on eBay. And so prices start very low on this panel now, but it's an exceptional panel. Uh, drivers are still available from Avid. So definitely if you're looking for an economy priced color grading panel, this is something definitely to consider. But there are a few little tricks for configuring it with your system, which we're going to go over in this episode. Okay, so when you first get your Avid Artist Color panel, um, in the earlier versions were known as Euphonics, and then later the company Euphonics was acquired by uh, Avid, and then it became known as the Avid Artist Color panel. Once you receive the panel, um, you then need to connect an Ethernet cable between your panel and your computer. And then you also have to download the driver from the Avid website. Okay, you need to identify the vintage of panel that you have. So if you've bought an older panel, an LCD panel from uh, eBay for example then you need to use an older driver because the newer drivers are designed to be used with the later OLED panels so for example I bought a panel that was basically unused and it was one of the latest models which was a which has an OLED displays on the panel and then you have to use the latest drivers for that. For example, if you try to use an older driver with the OLED panel uh, hardware, then you'll find that the panel will work, but you won't get any writing on the OLED display. And also you'll notice on the driver there will be a slider for changing the brightness of the display, and that will be grayed out. This indicates that it does not identify with the hardware that you are using. So you're trying to use an uh, LCD uh, display hardware driver with an OLED panel and this won't work. So the thing is to do is to identify which panel you have and then make sure that your driver associates with that directly. Once you've loaded the driver, you'll notice on the top of the graphic user interface, a small E will appear. This will also happen on Windows, but it will be in the lower right-hand side of the Windows display. So when you click on this, you have the About You con, and then you also have the U control settings. Now what happens here, is first this will identify that the panel has been seen and connected and then you have to then make sure that you add it to the list on the right. Secondly you have to make sure your workstations here that you're going to be using and then the third tab will show all of your options that you have available to you. And then the fourth one, as you can see here, this is the OLED screen save or time. And then finally, this is very important. This is the assign area here. So with resolve open, you need to then make sure that you add it into this area here. So what will happen here is that if you do not assign the application to the driver, as you can see here, it is currently linked to DaVinci Resolve on my Mac Pro. If this is not linked in this way, the minute you move your cursor outside the window and go onto Safari, for example, 
then you will find that you will lose control of DaVinci Resolve then with your panels. The next tab is actually a layout area. So we don't really have anything to change there. And then we also have a thing for soft keys as well. Come to Preferences in Resolve, and then under System, you select Control Panels, and then select Avid Artist Color. And then afterwards, click on Save. And then for this to take effect, you need to restart the application. And so once you restart Resolve, then you will see that he has control of the uh, control surface then. And so there we have it. For more information like this, don't forget to have a look at my other videos on the YouTube channel. And for more information about training services, have a look in the comments below. And think about subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot.